Hi guys, Rene here and welcome to the workshop. Today I want to address a question that I got a couple of times already in, on my Strava accounts. And the question is, how do I ride uh, so fast with relatively low power? And actually there's uh, three main reasons for that. So the power output, my position and my equipment. I'm not really going to discuss the equipment here because, well, most of, my most of my videos are about that and it's kind of obvious that with good equipment you're going to ride faster relative to yourself and the conditions. Uh, so let's just address the power. So if you look at my numbers, they don't seem to be very impressive or very high, but uh, you have to take notice that I'm a very small and short person and I'm very very light as well Now does that matter? Because people tend to say that watts per kilo don't really matter uh, On the flat and they don't well at least not uh, in a straight-up uh, direct manner, but if you consider You know my frontal area. I have very thin hands, I have very thin legs, a small stature, very aggressive position, uh, but I like to ride a very long reach uh, comparatively to my size and my height uh, and also quite a bit of drop as well, I'm going to put even more uh, on my road bike in the coming weeks uh, when my parts arrive for that. So. If you look at my position for either the road bike or a time trial bike, even my cross slash gravel adventure bike is quite aggressively set up, or at least as much as the geometry allows. So that's actually the main point. So you don't really need all that much power uh, if you don't have too much resistance. And in my case, I don't. For example, uh, my complete system weight with two full water bottles all the equipment and the bike, I think it's below 70 kilos or just just under that. If you take someone who is much heavier, for example, if he's 30% heavier, then automatically he's going to have 30% more rolling resistance because that's a direct proportion of the vertical load on the tires. He's going to have much more frontal area and possibly if someone well, I don't mean to be crude or anything, but you know, if someone's fat, he can't really take an aggressive position and hold it because of, you know, belly issues. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's the main thing. And then talking about the power numbers, well, they don't seem to be that high. But, for example, just today, a normal training ride with a couple of intervals, two and a half hours, normalized power, 250, not a lot, but if you look at my weight, that's more than 4 watts per kilo. Now, uh, how many people are doing more than 4 watts per kilo for more than 2.5 hours? Not many. Uh, so yeah, people like to think that it's just the equipment, but you know the numbers are there, you just, no bike goes fast without applying pressure over here. So uh, yeah, that's that's another point and then uh, if you take my uh, conditions and terrain into consideration uh, you know usually I set up my intervals uh, to be you know quite in a natural way so I like to ride hard when the resistance is high so uh, I do my intervals up hills and into the headwind and I usually uh, take it easy in the tailwind and perhaps a couple of sprints there when I can recover. So by doing this, basically in order to reach a high average speed, you don't need to go fast. You just need to not slow down very much. And that's uh, a point that some people are missing. So, and that's another reason why I'm quite good at time trolls and my average speeds are quite high even though the power seems to be uh, a little on the low side 
Now I'm going to address these uh, components a little bit in, in more detail if there's demand for it. But in short, this is how I achieve uh, the average speeds that I do achieve. So on a road bike, usually when normal training rides, it's between 35 and 40 k's per hour, rarely outside that. On a cross bike, around 33, 30, depending on how much uh, off-roading is in there. And on the time trial bike, it's uh, almost certainly about 40 k's per hour. Unfortunately, road racing isn't about long sustained efforts. So unfortunately, my road race results haven't been up to scratch really this season. Uh, although I can't really be disappointed about my time trial wins. That's where uh, the ability to produce sustained power comes very handy. And actually, that's the main reason why I want to try cross-country marathons because there basically you're doing a 3-4 hour time trial and a bit of technical stuff mixed in there so really it's about uh, your own ability and I have some off-roading background uh, coming from this side so we'll see how that goes okay if you want to know more about uh, my bikes and how they are set up plus the training uh, then don't forget to check out my Strava account and subscribe to the channel it's all today, thanks for watching and see you next time.